Hello there, Lyric Services. Trisha Warner here with your weekly Pilates work. Um, today we're gonna do some fun stuff. It's my birthday. Um, I thought we would do kind of some core play uh, activities that involve some resistance that I thought would be fun because birthdays are supposed to be fun, right? So an exercise can be really fun. So we're gonna use a lot of props today. So grab your light weights. You can either grab cans of soup or water bottles or one or two pounds max. You're gonna need your long TheraBand, your smushy ball or pillow if you have one. Um, actually, I was thinking about the foam roller, but I may be thinking not now. Keep it handy just in case. I always have like a, a itinerary of what we're gonna do and then sometimes I go rogue. So um, keep that handy just in case. So we are gonna start in standing with a little bit of standing warm up. So you're gonna start with your feet nice and wide apart. Toes are turned out a little bit. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you a side view so you can see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bend my knees and round my back and kind of come forward like I'm grabbing a big uh, ball out in front of me. And then you're gonna stand up and open your um, arms out to the side. So it's a little round and a little up. And little's the key word. We're warming up here. So we're just rounding and up and round and up, just like that. Last one. Very good. All right, come in with your feet together now. Warming up the feet, lift one heel up and then switch them. Lift the heel up as much as you can, just pedaling our feet, getting them nice and mobile, lengthening out that Achilles, stretching those toes. Okay, coming back. We're gonna do a, a knee hug, knee to chest. We're gonna add a little isometric hold to it today. Um, so bring one knee up, find your standing balance. This is where you could use your foam roller if you have trouble with balance. Or a kitchen chair would be fine on a wall. Something to hold on to. You're gonna grab your knee to your chest, pull it in, and then let go. Hold, one, two, three, four, five. You feel that work, right? In that hip flexor, deep abdominals are working. And um, we're gonna alternate sides. So go ahead and grab that knee. You can still hold on if you need to. Pull it up, let go, hold. One, two, three, four, five. Put it down. Switch to the other side. Pull it up, let go. One, two, three, four, five. This is great for balance too, right? Pull it in and let go. Excellent, one more time each side. And let go. And last one here. Perfect, okay. We're gonna open up those hips now. So bring your hands to your sides, open the hips up. So we're gonna alternate, just kind of swinging that leg open like a door swinging on a door hinge. One more opening. And then we're gonna close, close it up. Move those hips. They get stiff when we sit a lot. That's enough of those. Pause there. I'm gonna give you a side view here. You're gonna stagger your feet, one in front, one behind. And they're kind of in a normal alignment as if you were walking. And this one's kind of nice. Um, you're just gonna rock forward and back. You're gonna rock forward lifting the back heel, rock back, lift the front heel, or front toes, front part of the foot. So just rocking forward and back. I found a little rhythm to it. Back and forward and back. Lift that foot up in front, feel the stretch down the back of your calf. Let's add a little balance. When you rock back, bring the knee up. Put the foot back down, rock forward, rock back. Rock forward, lift it up. So we'll go back and forth once. Forward, back. This next one we're gonna balance when you go back, lift it up. Nice job, switch legs. So other foot is forward. Rock forward, lift the heel. Rock back, lift the front of the foot. Back and forth. 
Find that little rhythm to it. You can swing your arms, make it fun. I call this one core play today. So play with it. Let your body move in a way that feels good. Let's add the balance component. So we'll go forward, back, next one, forward, back, find your balance, lift the knee up. And put the foot back down again, forward, back, forward, back, lift the knee up, find your balance and put it back down. Perfect. All right, standing with your feet again, hip width apart. We're gonna bring our hands behind our head. Slight bend in the knees. So find a little bit of a athletic stance here. And then we're just gonna do a little side bend stretch. Warming up that thoracic spine for some, this is called lateral flexion, the proper term, or we call it side bending, right? And then coming back up, roll those shoulders back. I have one more for you in standing, at least according to my plan. <laughs> We're gonna come into a little side step. So now this one, if you overdo it, you will definitely feel it tomorrow. Not in a terrible way, but in a, like a wow, like I really stretched in my, my groin, my inner thigh. So if you don't usually move big out to the side, Keep it really small. Uh, there's no need for second day soreness, which is essentially inflammation or micro tearing. We don't really, we really want to avoid that. I want you to feel really good. So if you want to keep this a little smaller and not go so hard, if you're used to moving into a big side step position, then go for it. I'll show you both um, variations. So um, we're going to, I, I like either hands hips or hands clasped in front. You're gonna take a step out to the side and then bend that leg you stepped out onto. And as you bend the knee, you stick your rear end way back. So you're going back with your rear end. Keep your back flat and stick your tailbone way out so that this knee stays over the uh, he, foot and not over the toes. You wanna to stick your butt red way out, okay? So find that little bend there and then step all the way back in. We're gonna stay on this same side. Go ahead and take a step out. Bend the knees, stick the rear end out, and come back in. So you can keep it right here, nice and small. You could make it way up here, nice and big. So you decide where you wanna be. It's very gradable. Last one. This time when we step onto this foot, the standing foot, we're gonna lift this leg up. Let's go, lift it up. Find your balance. Keep it, lock it in, and come down. Switch to the other side. All right, standing up nice and tall, five step out. Step out, bend this knee, stick your rear end way back, and coming back in. And two, three, make it big or make it small. Last one, find the balance, here it is. Lift it up, hold, 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 and put it down. Great, grab your ball and meet me on the mat. We're gonna start laying down on our back. Grab sips of water as you need it. Hydration is the key of life, so we want that. Um, we're gonna do a little thoracic extension now. So bring the ball or your pillow or your towel roll right between your shoulder blades. They all work. Just a little prop to increase your back extension in this position. So, your hands are behind your head, cradling the weight. Keep your hips down on the mat. We're gonna inhale, let our back arch up and over this, this prop here, and find a little bit of stretch. Not a ton, just a little. And then as you exhale, lift your head and shoulders back up, you're gazing over your knees. Inhale, arch up and over again. Exhale, chest lift. Inhale, arch. Exhale, lift. Inhale, arch. Exhale, lift. Two more. <clears throat> Last one. You got it, good. You can roll onto your side to take the ball out from underneath you and then put the ball um, down next to you. We're gonna come back to it in just a second. If you have a TheraBand, and bridging is easy for you or not challenging, you can add a little resistance to the bridge 
and play with it a little bit. So hold the band kind of tight down near your hips. Feet are hip width apart. Feet are pointing straight out in front of you. You're in neutral spine. So if you want to, you can kind of rock your pelvis forward and back a couple of times like we do to make sure we're in neutral. And now from here, we're gonna press our hips up into this band, creating a little bit of a resistive bridge. Inhale to prepare. As you exhale, hold that band tight, push your hips up into the band, and then come back down. Good, let's go again. Two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe deep, nine, and 10. Great, come all the way down. Put the band off to one side. Grab your ball, put it right between your knees, the pillow, towel, whatever, the soft prop between your knees. And we're gonna give a firm squeeze on this ball. Go ahead and give it a firm squeeze, one, and release. Go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Great, you're gonna take the ball out from between your knees. Another bridge, lift it up and put the ball, pillow or towel under your pelvis. So your ball can't be too full. If you're using a ball, it has to be one that smushes because otherwise you'll be too high and it won't be comfortable. If you don't have a smushy ball or a towel or a pillow, you can put, I mean, most people have a towel and pillow in their house, you can use the foam roller. But I would like you to use something a little softer today just to create a little, um, more unstable of a surface. So on the foam roller, you can rock this way and that way. On the ball, your hips can go anywhere. So you need to work on multi-planes to keep the stability in your pelvis to do the exercise. So that's why I wanted you to try to use something a little wobbly today. So hold that neutral spine and lift one leg up into tabletop. Now we're going to alternate those legs. So keep your neck long, shoulders relaxed, and we're gonna switch our feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, bring the other leg up. Now this is harder. If that previous one was your max difficulty, stick with that again, because this one gets more challenging. You're gonna lower your legs down towards the mat. They don't have to touch, but if you're really strong, they will, and then exhale, lift them up. Mine will maybe get there by the end. Inhaling and exhaling. Good, three, four, five, six. Breathing in, seven and out. Eight, we've got two more, come on guys. Nine and 10, great job. Put one foot down and then the other foot down. Lift your hips up, take the ball out from underneath your pelvis and roll back down. Excellent, let's give you a little stretch here. Separate your feet nice and wide. This wasn't on the list, but I feel like you deserve it. Arms out to a side, palms down towards the floor. Go ahead and move your knees over to one side of the mat and find a nice rotation stretch here. It's important to move into this rotation and hip opening stretch and go to the other side. We did a little hip opening and standing, but we didn't have the assistance of gravity to kind of help find a little bit more stretch. This is a little bit more uh, static than the other one, which was more dynamic. Go ahead and back and forth one more time. Oh, it feels good. If you feel a little pop or a little click and it's not painful, then it's okay, don't worry about it. I just got a big, cavitation of my low back. Just things kind of finding a better position. Ligaments popping around. And then bring your knees back up, perfect. Grab your weights. We're gonna add a little chest lift. So arms up overhead. We're gonna inhale to prepare. As you exhale, you're gonna lift your arms, lift your head and shoulders, bring the weights down by your sides and then inhale, come back down. Exhale, lift again. 
Inhale down. And lift. And lower. And lift. And lower. We've got four more. You got it? And one. Two. Three. And last one. Four. Great job. You can put the weights down. Actually, let's keep one in both hands. If you're using a water bottle, hold it like the lengthways way or a pan. And we're gonna add a little oblique variation. So you're gonna do the same chest lift. This time you're bringing the weight to the outside of one hip or leg and then coming back down. If you wanna make this more challenging, you can do it with the legs and tabletop. Either way, I'll take it. We're doing six to each side. Let's go. Exhale, lift one. Stay on that same side. Two. Three. Four. If your neck gets tired, keep it down. And last one. Six. Other side. Go one. Two. Three. Four. Five. And six, great job. Bring one foot down, the other foot down. Awesome, you can put the weight down for a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. And just like this, um, we're going to just rock that pelvis back and forth again. Rocking back and forth. Breathe deep. Good, loosen that back up. And excellent. All right, coming onto your side. And then we're gonna use the ball and sideline. You're gonna put the ball pillow or you could even use your foam roller, but just put something soft on top of it because your ribs are kind of sensitive here. You wanna put the prop underneath your rib cage, okay? So it's not quite under your armpit, a little lower than that. And then your bottom knee is gonna be bent. Your top leg is out straight. All right, hands are behind your head. You're gonna push your rib cage down into the ball, lifting your upper body just an inch or two. Uh, you don't have to go big on this. If you're not used to moving like this, I would insist you keep it small. You're gonna push your rib cage down into the ball, hover your shoulders an inch or two away from the floor. You're gonna feel the work here and that's what we're going for. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you got two more. If not, stop, nine and 10. Good, coming down. You can take the ball out. It's a great way to isolate the obliques and your quadratus lumborum muscle on your back. Let's give ourselves a book opening stretch because you know me, I like to work the stretching in between the more challenging exercises. It gives us a nice little um, chance to stretch and breathe. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, float that arm up to the ceiling. Opening up the chest, find that book opening stretch. Inhale in the stretch. Exhale, coming all the way back. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, open. Try to keep the hips and the knees glued to the mat. And then back. And last one. Inhale. And exhale. Great job. Stretch the top leg all the way out nice and long. Let the toes come down to the floor. Top hand, thumb up to the ceiling. Arc it all the way up overhead. Find a good stretch here. Reach the hand and foot away from each other so that you're getting a nice length down that side that you just worked. Beautiful. Come on up. Switch to the other side. <laughs> You're going to take the ball, put it under your rib cage, laying down on your side, bottom knees bent, top knee, top knee is straight, hands come behind your head. So remember, it's not a big motion. Pushing the ribs down to use these muscles to lift your shoulders and head a little off the floor. Go two, not a big motion. Three, four, five. Six, 
seven, eight, two more. And you did it. Take the ball out from underneath you, put it down, and come onto your side for your book opening stretch. You're gonna inhale to prepare in this position. Exhale, open the chest and the shoulders. Stretch that arm out long. Move away from the wall if you're gonna limit your stretch. Inhale in it. Exhale, come back. So good. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, open. I feel like anyone who spends a lot of time sitting at a desk should do this once a day. I really pretty adamant about that. And even if you don't work at a desk, I mean, think about our students, our kids in school sitting at those desks, you know, not even if you're not an office worker or how much time they spend on their, on their Chromebooks doing homework or slumped over their phone, right? This is probably something the whole family should be doing. All right, so from here, we're coming into quadruped. Flip over. <clears throat> Sips of tea or water as needed. Mm, delicious. Hands under your shoulders. Knees under your hips. We're going to use that one pound weight, so grab it. You'll be surprised how much core work you get when you just add a light weight to your hand. So in this position, holding onto the weight, we're gonna lift it out to the side and lower it down. Now, if you have good body awareness, you are already feeling this in your deep abdominals. You're feeling this diagonal oblique line working and probably some work in this opposite hip. And not everybody gets that same information from their body. They might not feel it. I happen to be lucky enough to get that feedback from my nervous system and my brain interprets it as I know what's working. Um, if you don't get that feeling, if you're doing this, know it's working. You can tuck your toes if that's more comfortable. Last one. Good. Roll it over to the other hand. Same thing. Nice flat back. Pull the belly button away from the floor. Lift the arm up and away from the floor. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Great. Bring it back to the first hand. <clears throat> We're going straight back with it now, okay? Lift it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to hold the tenth one. Nine, last one. Hold it up. Now, little triceps kick back. Bend the elbow, straighten it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two more. Come on, tricep. And last one. That's that big muscle in the back of your upper arm. Great way to tone it. It's a great muscle to help you get up out of a chair, push up out of bed. Um, also makes your arms look nice and sleeveless um, fashion. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn this way so you can see what's going on on this arm. Same thing though, lift it straight back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold it up, ten. Bend the elbow, straighten the elbow. Don't drop that elbow at all. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. Put the weight off to one side. We're going to do um, kind of like a child's pose, but it's actually called puppy pose. You're going to untuck your toes. Keep your hips right where they are and stretch your arms out in front of you. Stretch them way out. And instead of sitting back to child's pose like we usually do, we're going to leave our hips up and we're going to lower our chest down towards the floor. If your shoulders have a tendency to get um, impinged, turn your hands so your thumbs are up to the ceiling. You're going to lower your chest down to the floor. It's a little arch in your back. 
and you're gonna lift your hips up, lower your, your chin, your clavicles, and try to find a little bit of extension here. Ooh, it's a little tight today. Good, now you can put your palms down, sit your hips back and come into your child's pose. It's a little different. Fantastic, coming down onto your elbows. You can prop yourself up on your elbows. You're gonna bend both knees in and straighten them out. One, two, three. This is very playful, isn't it? Talking about core play. This always makes me feel like a kid who lays on their stomach and reads a book and just kind of pumps their legs up. It's great hamstring activation, it's good quad length, and it's fun. Takes me back. On my 45th birthday, this make me, makes me feel like a kid. <laughs> Last one, stretch the legs out. You're gonna lower your chest halfway to the floor. Bring your arms down by your sides, palms facing the floor. Open those shoulders, don't let them round towards the floor. Repel them away from the floor. Nice long spine, we're going to pump the arms. One, two, three, four. We're strengthening our back now. The core isn't just the front of our body, it's the whole, all sides. So we gotta do the back, we did our sides, we did our front, I lost count. 20 more, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, we were going for 50. I think we're close. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And since we already did our triceps, I was feeling that in the back of my upper arms. Push yourself up, we're gonna come right up to standing. With your long TheraBand, okay? Last series here, you're going to step on the end of your band. And your arms should be about on this diagonal here, like, I don't know, 60 degrees or something. Um, if it's way down here when your band is straight, it's going to be too hard. Um, maybe just hold it in your other hand so that you're about this distance. See what you can do. All right, so it's about this difficulty here. You're going to pull your tummy muscles in, stand nice and tall. Lift that arm up, just to shoulder height, little pulses. Two, three, four, five, six. You're standing straight, but your knees are not locked. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. Grab the band with both hands. So that's a problem if you're holding it with your other hand. You might need to skip this one. Actually, put it under your foot because this one you can choke up a little bit more on and make it a little tighter. Holding it like you're holding a ball. You're going to bring your body over your foot with the band and then round so that you're looking at that band and then come back up to straight. So you're just doing a little rotation and flexion towards the foot that has the band. Good, we're combining motions, so don't expect a big range, but you are using your core play muscles to do this. Two more, one and two, great job. Grab the end of the band again with the same arm that the foot is on and push it up to the ceiling. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Getting those shoulders nice and strong, last one. Good, put it in your opposite hand, thumb is up. We're pulling um, the band up on a diagonal like you're pulling a sword out of a sheath. So if your sword is over here, you're raising it up and finding that nice long position. Four more, one, two, three, four. I have one more fun one for you on this side. Separate your feet a little wider. Hold the band with both hands straight out in front. So my arms are straight like this. Pull the tummy in. You're pulling the band away from the foot. And I'm doing this with my back. So it's, nothing else is moving. I'm just like you're swinging a baseball bat kind of. Rotate, it's called a Pavlov press. It is fantastic for your deep obliques here. Five more, one, two, three, four, five. Good, switch to the other side. Same thing, find that starting position. Lift the arm out to the side, one, Two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. Both hands choke up on it a little bit. Rotate towards the bent foot. Pull it back up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This feels so good. And ten. Grab the knot again in that same foot, same arm. Push it up to the ceiling. One, two, three. Your arms are going to feel so energized after this. You're going to go through the rest of your day with a lot more zip. Two more. Good. Take that sword out of the sheet. Grab it and pull it. One, two, three. And that's actually what Joseph Pilates called this one, too. It was a different variation. I'm doing it with the band. He did it with the reformer, which is this equipment over here. But you can find other ways to do all these exercises with just a few props. Last one. Good, pal off press. Grab it with both hands, stretch it out in front. Nice wide stance, pull away from the foot. Two, three, four, and then you are done. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. Great. Thanks for playing with me on my birthday. Core play. Great job. Hope you, hope you have a wonderful day. Bye guys.